Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 139th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. This battle was fought approximately two years ago. The team I'm in today consists of Brotherhood member Pompey, who has bought the Seleucid faction. And then myself, Spartan Commander, who has bought the Rome SPQR faction. And then Brotherhood member Speedstar125. You don't see Speedstar uh, playing RTW much these days, but uh, he was a very good player um, when he was playing. So there's our team there. As I said, this game was for um, approximately two years ago. Um, I know that uh, the Pomp has been playing RTW for years, and as you know, I've been playing it since it's first come out. So it's a pretty good team. At this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at Pompey's Seleucid army from two years ago. As you can see, his forward units are the Silver Shield Legionnaires. Um, these guys can throw pilers and are a little bit like the Ro Roman urban cohorts, but um, without uh, such high specifications as they've got. So there you can see he's got about seven units of them. Then we go on to the Silver Shield Pikemen. As you know that these um, Seleucid uh, pikemen have got extremely long pikes and are difficult to fight down um, to kill the, uh, the pikemen on the other end. Then we have the infamous uh, Seleucid Cataphract Cavalry. As, uh, as you know from other battle videos we call these the tanks of the ancient world. They really are uh, really well armoured, their defence is very high and um, their attack is very good too. And um, used correctly, they can be battle winning troops. So, there's a Seleucid army from two years ago, looks pretty good to me. And here is the other team. Here we have a Crimson Overlord, Brotherhood member Crimson Overlord, who's called himself Boo Boo in this game, but it is Brotherhood member Crimson Overlord who's bought the Rome Julio faction. And then we have Wolves NNN who has bought, also bought the uh, Rome Julio faction. Um, NNN doesn't play that much these days, but in his time he was a really good player. And then we have Brotherhood member Uther, who has bought the Germania faction. Uh, very unusual for Uther to bring Germania. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see um, what his army looks like. If you notice there, you can't see any cavalry. Can you see the darkened areas of the map? That's the long grass area, and that's where his cavalry will be hidden in that long grass. We'll probably see them a bit later on. So there's the other team. That's pretty good to me, and this could be a really great battle to watch. At this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at Uther's Germania army. As you see, his forward units, his two forward units, are the Night Raiders. These guys have got a scare factor and uh, instill fear in nearby enemy troops. And if you've got troops nearly routing, to bring those troops in, they could cause the rout. Then we have the backbone of the Germania army, the um, Chosen Axemen. These guys' axes are effective against armour, and used correctly, they can cut swathes through heavily armoured Roman troops. And then we have the infamous Berserkers. Um, as said before in other videos of mine, these Berserkers are actually based on true characters from history. Um, in real life, these Berserkers would either take um, a cocktail of drugs, or would be drunk, or even had mental health um, issues before a battle, and was, were seen um, in battle to be dangerous to both friend and foe alike. And uh, there are uh, tales saying that at the end of battles, the, some Berserkers were seen running around the battlefield naked, covered in blood and gore of the enemy, screaming. Um, so I think both friend and foe alike uh, tended to uh, avoid them. Even outside of battle, these men had an aura about them saying almost like, stay away from me. And in this game, um, these Berserkers' uh, specifications really reflect that. Those uh, maces they're carrying there are effective against armour as well. So uh, these guys are really tough and um, <clears throat> are to be avoided if you can. Also, you can see that um, Uther's got, I think it's naked fanatics there. You don't often see them being bought onto the uh, 31k battlefield. But if you look at the different sizes between the berserkers and those naked fanatics, you can see how tough those um, berserkers are. And there we have the hidden Germania cavalry there. Remember I said they were hiding in the long grass? 
and you know, they've just come out the long grass now and I think Uther's got five of those Gothic cavalry now these Germania Gothic cavalry are uh, I think very underestimated cavalry if you look at their specifications they're really tough and they can be battle winning troops if used correctly so there's the other uh, Germania army that's pretty good to me At this very early stage of the battle, on our left flank here, you can see that Germania and the enemy uh, Julii armies are moving round to our left. Um, I'm just wondering whether they're thinking about attack attacking our um, ally Seleucid army there in kind of a, a two-on-one attack. As you can see, Speed, Star and myself are moving towards the enemy there, um, maybe hoping to draw some of the forces away from uh, from our left flank there. But uh, the way that the, the whole Germania army is over here on our left flank um, makes me think that they're looking to attack our, um, our Seleucid ally there. Now it's unusual for Germania to attack Seleucid because of the pikes. But if you notice that um, Pompey has split his army here, he's got his legionnaires away from his pikes there and that's what Uther is going for. I don't know whether Pompey's strategy there was to try and draw the Germania army over so that he could then put his legionnaires behind his pikes so that the Germania would then charge into his um, his pike units. As you know uh, Germania would die very quickly against pikes so maybe that was um, Pompey's strategy there. Um, so as he's moving his, um, his units in behind his pike units there as fast as he can. But if you notice, Germania has moved extremely quickly over the battlefield there. Just going to pause the game here to show you something a moment. If you notice, remember we said that those um, berserkers and um, those night raiders had um, a fear factor where they intimidated nearby troops. Can you see here what that Seleucid unit is saying? Um, it's intimidated by nearby enemy troops. And that's, uh, that just goes to show how much the fear factor comes from those night raiders and berserkers. And of course, if um, they're intimidated, then their morale drops. And this is where you can start to get mass routes. If uh, lots of uh, units start to um, get intimidated, their morale drops. And if you hit them just at the right time, you can cause a mass route. That's the power of Germania if used correctly. As you can see, now there's a, uh, a couple of um, sunny said units that are starting to route. Right, now can you see the berserkers have been activated? Can you see the red banner above the berserkers' heads flashing on and off? Uther's activated those berserkers now and they're charging into the Seleucid. Um, legionnaires there. <clears throat> if you notice the power of those berserkers, can you see how they hit those legionnaires up in the air? That's how strong and powerful these um, the berserkers are. If you notice here that the uh, Seleucid uh, tank cataphract cavalry are charging into Uther's Germania cavalry here. Wouldn't surprise me if Uther got some support from uh, his Julii ally there. And as you can see, the Julii cavalry are now charging in to support the uh, their Germania ally there. But you can see a lot of Seleucid units are starting to mass route here and that's the scare factor and the intimidation factor by those berserkers there. Uh, and don't forget he's got the Night Raiders that also have got that fear factor plus he's got those chosen axemen that were effective against armor. So um, for all intents and purposes a lot of the Seleucid infantry appears uh, to have routed now. If you can see I'm bringing my um, SBQR cavalry over to charge in through my Seleucid ally to smash into the um, the Julii cavalry there, and we're starting to route some of that um, that Julii cavalry. Just to say, oh, there's a Germania general gone. So Germania's morale is not very good, and now their general has been killed. Um, my thoughts are that uh, the ordinary uh, Germania. Um, units now will start to rout pretty quickly with their general dead. Um, just to say that I believe in this battle Crimson has got 17 infantry and only 3 cavalry so um, he's got a lot of infantry. As you can see there, I'm just paused again for a second for us to take stock of the situation. You can you see uh, most of the Seleucid infantry has now routed and as you can see the enemy Julii infantry are moving over to our left flank as well. So, uh, as you can see, at this stage of the battle, with our Sel most of Seleucid infantry routing, things are not looking very good for our team. Can you see the activated berserkers are now moving over to my army and starting to attack my SBQR units there. So, uh, if you notice, Speedstar is moving his Scipii army over as well. So, as you can see, um, the overall battle picture there is not looking very good for, um, for our team at this stage. 
and with those berserkers heading towards my uh, my troops things are not looking very good for my army either You can see speed stars uh, charge some of his cavalry in. You can see I've had my cavalry in there fighting as well, trying to hold um, our left flank there, trying to shore up our left left flank there. That was a massive hit by Germania on um, on Pompey's force there. Here you are. You can see the berserkers here attacking our forces, but both speed star and myself are trying to run our forces over to that left flank now as fast as we can. But if you notice, these berserkers are standing pretty firm there as they're. Um, is our killing us. But one of the Berserker units is just routed. I think all those men have just been killed there. So there's an overall view of the uh, of the battlefield so far. If you notice, we've still got quite a bit of cavalry left. And if you notice, over to our far left, can you see some of the Seleucid units are starting to rally? Now, do you remember in other battle videos what, what we've talked about, about chasing down routers? If you chase down routed units, they will not rally and they won't come back to bite you in the bottom. But if you notice, a lot of those Seleucid units are starting to rally up on that left flank. Meanwhile here, can you see we're all we're setting up our armies here, ready for the, uh, if you like, the final phase of the battle. I say, if you look over to the left, you can see some of the Seleucid um, units there starting to rally after being routed. Um, if you notice here on the right, can you see um, our uh, ally here, our Scipio ally, are starting to attack the uh, the Julii army there over on our right. Now, if you notice, that Julii army has become a little bit isolated from his allies there over on the right. And if we can hit him fast, we might be able to cause a lot of casualties here on the right flank. If you notice overall we have got the um, we have got the cavalry advantage here now whether that a tell towards the end of the battle I don't know but we definitely have got the cavalry advantage at this stage but they have got the infantry advantage as I said I think believe Crimson's brought 17 infantry to this battle and only three cavalry can you see the Seleucid tank cavalry has just charged in there and routed lots of the um, enemy Julii infantry there both Speed Star and myself are charging our cavalry in as well and moving infantry over there as well. So you see a lot of the enemy Julii units are starting to rout now. Units you see in the centre there's a very aggressive battle going on in the centre there. Just going to pause the game here for us to take stock of the situation at the moment. As you can see on our right here, Speed Star um, with our cavalry support there has done really well on the right flank there and has routed a lot of the enemy forces. Um, in the centre here you can see this is where the main melee is going on at the moment. Um, lots of uh, action going on there. But if you notice, you remember what you said about those units that were routing now, those Seleucid units that were routing have now rallied and are coming back into the battle. So just to rem remind everybody that when you actually route units, make sure you chase them off the battlefield or they will come back. And uh, we have seen battles where routed units have come back and actually won the battle for that team. So remember, uh, when you do route uh, the enemy units, make sure you chase them off the battlefield. Don't let them rally. As you can see, there's a heck of a lot of Julii infantry left here. And if you notice that um, Crimson's playing it pretty good here, he's keeping the units back so they'll be fresh. Can you notice he's got lots of units actually fighting, but he's got a lot of units back in the background there. Just stood around. They're fresh. He knows how important fresh units are to the battle. Did you notice how he's charging his cavalry units into my uh, infantry there? I've only got 12 units of infantry at the beginning of this battle, but they were very well upgraded. And um, when he charges his cavalry, and I think if my units were only gold gold, they would have routed by now. But because they've got um, stripes on them, they're managing to hold. If you notice here on the right flank, we are just kind of um, almost finishing off the uh, the enemy Julia units that are here on the right flank. You notice I'm charging my cavalry in there with a view to try and charge into those engaged Julia infantry that are facing our uh, units there with a hope to try and rout them but unfortunately my cavalry is so battle damaged that um, 
they didn't do the, uh, the the damage that I was hoping they were going to do. As you can see at the moment, the uh, the enemy have got a lot of infantry left, but we have got cavalry advantage. Okay, all our units are very badly battle damaged, but uh, we still have got um, got a bit of cavalry advantage here. You know, just speed stars charging his cavalry in there through his own units into the enemy Julii infantry there, putting pressure on the uh, the infantry. If you notice that um, Pomp is not really using his rallied um, Seleucid units aggressively because he knows their morale would have dropped since they were routed and their battle damage, so he doesn't want to take a chance of using them till he has to because he knows that with their morale so low and taking so many casualties they could rout if they're under pressure. Can you notice some Julio infantry have moved over to our right flank there in a threatening action but by doing that those three units have become isolated and we can hit them. You notice here I'm going into the back of that um, uh, Roman Julio, enemy Julio general there hoping to take the general out because as we all know if we can take the general out his troops morale then drops but uh, unfortunately um, I didn't manage to get the general that time. But these three units that come round to our right flank are taking a bit of a hammering at the moment. My um, guess is I've pulled my cavalry back here with a view to charge back into that enemy general. There you go, can you see my SPQR cavalry charging back in? I pulled them out, rallied them, and then charged them back in to get the full cavalry charge and bonus, and bang! And as they went in there and killed the, uh, the Julio the enemy general there. So there's a general overview of the of the battle. If you notice that Pomp is still, sorry, um, Crimson still keeping units at the rear, not engaging them. So those are our fresh units. Now having fresh units towards the end of the battle could make the difference here. Notice I'm taking some cavalry around the rear of the um, the enemy there, and if you notice that um, Speedstar has still got some cavalry left as well. As I said before, do you notice Pomp is not really committing his uh, rallied um, infantry units that much yet, just keeping them at the back, resting them. Um, knowing that their morale won't be that good he'll only commit them when he has to can you see our uh, alloys charging I'm just going to pause the game here for a second if you notice that um, can you see that crimson overlords units there are all pretty fresh the units that that um, our alloys just hit are fresh but if you look at my alloys uh, units there can you see they're all tired or very tired and they're hitting fresh infantry and this is the difference of fresh infantry fighting tired troops that can really make a difference. And it wouldn't surprise me if those Skippy R units started to rout there upon hitting fresh enemy troops and they're tired. There, can you see some of the uh, Skippy R units starting to rout there? That's what happens when uh, tired or very tired troops attack fresh uh, enemy units. If you can see that Pomp is moving some of his units around the back of the enemy um, enemy army there in a tactical move. Of course, if the enemy feels enclosed or surrounded, then their morale starts to drop as well. If you notice, I just charged the remnants of my SBQR cavalry in there and have pulled the infantry back, allowing a Speed Stars infantry to run forward and attack the rear of those Julii, uh, enemy Julio troops there. Can you see that the um, Pomp is, uh, sorry, um, Crimson Overlord's moving his Julio infantry out to confront what he considers as the most dangerous uh, units left, and that's a Seleucid heavy tank cavalry. Can you see that he's trying to engage them? What he'd like to do is pin them with his cavalry and then move his infantry in to help to help try and kill those um, Seleucid cavalry there. But wisely, Pomp is pulling his Seleucid cavalry out of the fray there. He can see what's happening using his years of experience. He just wants to get his cavalry back out of the way. 
and then um, and then come back when he's ready to do that. As you can see at the moment, the battle could go either way. There's a heck of a lot of Julia infantry left. Right, I'm just going to pause the game here to ask uh, viewers watching this a tactical question. As you can see, if you look all over the battlefield there, you've got an overview of the battlefield here. If you were in charge of Pompey's cavalry here, these units here, where would you charge that cavalry and where can you see a cavalry attack would do the most damage? Maybe into the flank of the enemy there, would that be a good, uh, good place to hit? Maybe take them in between the enemy, into the centre there, and then charge into the rear of the engaged troops. If you were in charge of that cavalry, where do you think you would charge them? Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what happens. As you can see, it's a very fierce battle going on here on, on two particular fronts. Right. Can you see Pompey's charging his cavalry in? He looks like he's going to go into the flank of the Julio infantry here, the engaged Julio infantry. Can you see his cavalry is hit? But the way that the cavalry um, attack, they look exhausted to me. Yeah, I think they're all pretty exhausted, those cavalry units. Did you see how how um, their um, attack didn't penetrate? There was hardly any penetration in that attack, and that's because they're so tired or even exhausted units. And this really does affect um, the capability of units if they get exhausted. You saw that that cavalry hit hardly penetrated at all when it went in them. You notice he's charged the cavalry now into the uh, the other part of the uh, the Julio infantry over there on the left. But this is just something that um, I like to emphasize, especially to new players, that exhausted or very tired units fighting fresh units, the fresh units will usually win. So. Um, it's very important that you try and keep, if you can, try and keep some units at the back of your army that are fresh, that you can throw in into critical parts of the battlefield when they're really needed there. Just going to pause the game here for us to take stock of the situation at the moment. Can you see that I've just charged my general in? Now, my general had been resting at the back of my, um, my infantry units there, so it's completely fresh. So I've just charged it through my infantry into the tired Julio infantry. Can you see straight away that one general unit has routed three tired uh, Julio units there? Just because I kept that general unit fresh, that's what it's actually done. And now I'm charging in other units there as well. Um, I think there was another couple of very fresh units there that I've charged in. And as you see, the fresh units then charging it into tired infantry are starting to cause routes. Can you see how the Julio infantry is starting to route now? Because that Julio infantry was tired and it was being hit by fresh infantry. You see the Julio general's just been killed. And so, um, obviously, the morale of his troops will now drop. So um, it looks like our teams um, managed to um, <clears throat> go on and uh, on won the battle there. Uh, just like I say, bearing in mind this was only a 3v3 battle, you can see the dead stretch from one side of the battlefield to the other. It just goes to show how intense this 3v3 battle was. If you remember, the action kicked off here on the left flank. Can you see all the dead, especially cavalry here? Right, um, I just like, first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game. As I said, this game was fought approximately two years ago, and I think it's interesting to see how armies and maybe tactics have changed in two years. Um, really well played to the other team there. I thought uh, there were some great tactical moves, uh, some great attacking moves, and especially well done to Crimson Overlord there, uh, with his 17 units of infantry and 3 units of cavalry. I thought he held really well towards the end of that battle, and to be honest with you, that battle could have gone either way. Uh, so really well done to him. I uh, really like to say really well done to Pompey um, for his use of Seleucid, especially the way he used that Seleucid cavalry around the battlefield. Um, selecting nice targets to hit, uh, really well done for that. And really well done to Speedstar125 as well. I thought he played extremely there, well there with his Scipio forces. 
Um, it was a great battle to watch. If you notice that uh, Crimson Overlord's got the highest kills in the battle, but like we said before, having the highest kills in the battle doesn't necessarily mean that your team has won. So uh, that was a great battle to be in. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and look forward to seeing you soon. And it's Spartan Commander saying bye for now.